on the negatives. And you kind of say, well, I didn't like that, I didn't like that, I didn't like that. And that probably is why you don't buy that house. So that's what we have to accomplish here. We have to get rid of those negatives. So as somebody coming into this community says, wow, you know, what a great place. I'd like to live here. So that's the goal. I'm going to go back to the left. I'm going to go left, right, left, right. So, Jerry, if you want to move over here, you may get sooner. Go ahead, Mary. Mary Nissen, uh, Westridge Circle. Uh, we know from the survey. Mary, if you could get right up to the microphone and maybe just, yeah, pull it down. down. Okay. There you go. Um, we know from the survey that, that uh, our security Okay. Yes. Our security is a really critical issue for us. Yes. And I know in the past year or so that we've heard repeatedly that there are challenges staffing security because it's not competitive to the marketplace what we can offer people coming in. And I know we right. lost somebody this year. Stay in the front of the microphone, oh, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know we lost somebody. So when you addressed the payroll issues and the benefit issues was that also addressed well yes. for security yes it was okay. yeah in fact that was one of the areas that the study found that they were below market so we made adjustments for that both 13 and 14 back to the right hi betsy clark 110 tremont drive i have two questions one concerns the Community Conference Center sign, and I'm glad the chief is here because he may have some input on that. Um, I have uh, seen some in information in the newspapers and also online about the electronic signs and the time that the actual words are on the signs, the brightness and that kind of thing, uh, from being a safety hazard for people driving by. Uh, that it would be a distraction. I know at night the one that's on the Cumberland County Bank can be very, very jarring at time uh, and affect your night vision. So that would be something that I would have a concern about, how long those words are left up there and how bright it would be. Yeah, good um, point. That's something we want to make sure we get the right sign, has the right resolution, so it is very clear and not, as you say, too bright, too distracting. So we'll definitely take that into account. My second question is, when they raised the sewer fee, um, it's now been over three years. We were told that that $3 fee, extra fee that went towards all this improvement uh, would basically go away after three years. So, you know, you're not raising it, but how about lowering it? Well, a reason for that is we also did a long-range study, uh, had McGill Engineering come in and take a look at our whole system and do a long-range study of that and determine that we're going to need to make some significant improvements five years from now. So we need to start building up our cash reserves so that we can borrow less when we need to make those improvements. So that's why. So I guess my comment would be when you sell us something or when you when you put something in and say, well, it's only for three years, let's be honest and realize that it's not going to go away. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Goebel. Can you hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, most of my questions center around economics. Okay. Uh, one of them, what is, the, uh, what is the economic impact of one more new house built? One more new house built. Uh, we generate about $6,100 in uh, sewer tap fees. Now we have to pay for the materials and what have you for that uh, uh, that sewer system and what have you. So we we generate about is it $500 yeah, from every new home just in the uh, sewer, just from that home starting being built. Then of course we have the $33 a month from that uh, new home going into the sewer service fee fund. Okay, so that's just looking at sewer. Then as you look at uh, all your amenities and things of that nature, obviously you have uh, your assessments of $50 a month. So that's $600 a year. And then it really depends on that individual and how they use the amenities. Are they a golfer versus tennis, you know, eat out and what have you. So quite honestly, never done an economic impact study for one new home and what have you, uh, but that would cost some money to, to do that. But Well, I'd recommend that you do that, that, uh, you know, uh, well, you just uh, referred to additional revenues. Mm -hmm. Are there additional expenses that, uh, what's, what's the net profit, I guess? Yeah, as I say, on the sewer, it's $500. Okay, that's your one-time sewer tap fee profit. Then you have that operating cost uh, or revenue of $33. 
There is some uh, expenses related to that for the employees and what have you at the sewer system, but typically somebody new comes on to the sewer system, they're not adding a lot of incremental cost you know, to that operation. Uh, and then really the amenities, it depends on that individual and how they use the amenities. So it's hard to say. You know, one person, the you know, impact is going to be another one number, another person is going to be a much larger number. Do you have data on, on uh, of the new people that are coming in? How many are big users of what kind of amenities? We do a uh, new member survey, uh, and that's, you know, it's all voluntary. And so we do get information as to how many rounds of golf they expect to play, what amenities they expect to use, and things of that nature. Yes, we do that. I, I would just recommend you try to make that a little more formalized so that you have a real good handle on how good we ought to feel about the next house built. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, next, uh, I have uh, debt, a lot of questions about debt. Okay. Uh, we have about seven seventy-five uh, million or uh, seven point five million dollars in uh, in debt. Is that correct? Long-term debt. Is your is your debt right now? At the end of the year, about seven point two million, and looks like about seven million at the end of two thousand fourteen. And and uh, is the impact of uh, any swap contracts impact that uh, debt idea? Uh, no, those are, you've got your wastewater treatment plant and Stonehenge, and those are the two that have the swap contracts. And uh, so they don't affect the balances, but they do affect our financial statements uh, on an annual basis. They do affect our cash flow. They don't affect our cash flow. They only affect, it's a, it's a paper entry is what it boils down to, but it doesn't affect cash flow at all. Right. There's no payments that we make uh, to uh, the lenders if uh, that we come up wrong on the swap? No. The only time it's impacted is if you actually try and refinance that loan. And we looked at that. We looked at both of these loans in 2012, 2013, worked with the banks and determined that uh, it wasn't financially feasible to refinance loans, loans because of the swap penalty. Uh, question on collateral. How much of the debt is... Uh is collateralized by uh, our some of, some of our assets. Well, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The is collateralized by plant. Okay. Stone. Chester is still going out. Oh. Okay, let me stand by the podium there. Yeah, let me see. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, let me get out here. Then yeah, it's going in and out. We were working pretty good there for a while. Uh, community center, part of that is collateralized by the community center as well as Dorchester. But we have a lot of assets that are subject to uh, those uh, contracts. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Uh, how, how, many, how, many, uh, how much of that debt? is uh, is a uh, per resident homeowner well if you look at uh, seven million no, divided per, per per household I know uh, seven million divided by five thousand roughly okay I did the math it's about sixteen thousand no about no it's uh, it's going to be less than be 15, a little less 000. yeah yeah and in fact we uh, we do some studies and some benchmarking against uh, some clubs in Florida uh, that uh, our auditors uh, audit them, and actually our debt per member is uh, significantly lower. Now, are, we per, are, are, are the households personally liable for that debt? No. Who is? The association. And who makes up the association? The membership. But you, your house is not leanable for this debt. The association, the entity, is. Okay. I, I, I guess I don't understand that, but I'll take your response. Uh, What's that, Regine? Yeah, it's all common property. Yeah. Okay, but we're, we're, not, we're not liable if, uh, the debt, uh, if the debt can be paid. Okay. Thank you very much.
Marianne Noak, 140 Cromwell Lane. Number one, the sign. You want to put up that sign out here with the digital stuff. Me personally, just me personally, have been down Stonehenge five times this year, maximum. Why can't, if you're going to put up that digital stuff to make this community look a little bit cheaper, leave it on Peavine Road, where it is at the four-way stop, so that people can see it that live on the north side, okay? Right. So that's number one. Let you me should... answer that. Okay. Actually, last year, when we did our presentation, that's where we had it. And we had more people respond that they did not want a digital sign at the four-way stop, so that's why we moved it down to the community and conference center. Okay, so uh, if I want to so. know what's going on, I got to drive up here to the community conference center? I don't think so. Think well, about that. Well, think well, about it. Well, I know you're getting our emails. Uh, yeah, you and, do and know that because you're getting mine. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, number two. You talked about the, um, the amount that we subsidize golf. How much money do we have to subsidize food and beverage? Uh, this year's budget, it's around 200, 2014, it's around $260,000. That's all for the loss that we've had alone at Legends? Legends and Stonehenge both. I don't think that figure's right, but I'll take you for your word. Um, <laughs> I may, and I'm drawing from memory. I may be off about $10,000. but yeah, Well, yeah. since we're losing so much money on food and beverage to begin with. Um, also, who are, who are the people that are buying these B lots? Are they um, contractors, developers? Are they private businesses that maybe want to put something in the glade, like uh, Dr. Galloway's office and stuff like that? Who are you selling these lots to, or is quote unquote that none of our business right no uh, first of all they're all residential lots so you can't have any commercial businesses like uh, Dr. Galloway's business on those lots and they're all being purchased by investors so we had uh, the first batch was one investor second batch was another investor and then they're they're reselling those that lots. will have to sell the lots to put homes on uh, yes but you know likewise the lots are going to need to be developed uh, fully developed before you can start putting a lot of homes on them. So it's uh, okay. so it's investors that are really selling them to individuals. They're not investors that are looking to do development. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Jerry? Uh, yeah, Jerry Miller. Bob, you and I have exchanged emails uh, back and forth, I think yesterday primarily. I hope this is the last meeting that we do not have the financials put out in advance so that people could take a look at it and ask questions about the financials while they're here, because the way we do it now, we can't. We don't even have anything. And we used to have people ask financials questions, but since you came here, you said that you want people to come here. If you, if you put on advance, it would discourage people from coming here So at the meeting. So I, I hope this is the last meeting, that we, last meeting that we have a budget meeting that stuff is not put out in advance for us to look at and ask questions about at this meeting. Thank you. I understand. Yeah, my, my approach to that is, uh, you know, when you put things out in advance, many times what happens is, uh, first of all, we've got some people, they're going to print it out. Uh, they're going to have a lot of questions. They're going to come to the meeting, and rather than listen to the presentation, they're going to be flipping through their pages, distracting the residents or the people around them, uh, or they're going to be looking at their questions, not focusing on the presentation. I like to do a presentation first so you really have a better understanding of the numbers. You know, clearly we can't put everything about the budget. You know, this is a very summarized uh, portion of the budget. The notebook that we give the board is about so thick, a lot of detail. So we have to try and summarize it as best we can. So again, the reason why I don't like to put things out in advance of my presentation, because quite honestly, I want you to listen to the presentation. I want you to focus on that, and then hopefully the big picture numbers. You know, you can see those real quick, and we've got some great questions today from a big picture standpoint. Okay, there's always some that want to get down into nitty gritty detail, and we can do that at a later date. We basically, this is the start of basically a two-week comment period, if you will. So you have the opportunity to 
ask questions here. You have the opportunity to send emails, letters, phone calls, what have you, to us to get your comments. And then again, at the board meeting. That's when they vote, but they don't vote until they get your comments and questions. Okay, so it's very open from that standpoint. So that's why I do it. You know, quite honestly, it's worked pretty well for the last 20 years that I've been doing this. So, uh, so I don't know. I, I, I plan on continuing this approach unless I'm told otherwise. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, to the right. Clyde Van Heeren, 222 Amherst Lane. I uh, am not a golfer. I'll fess up to that. Why don't we charge more for the golfing so that that isn't a burden to the rest of us? Well, everything we do here is really driven by the market. Uh, food and beverage. You can look at food and beverage and say, why don't we charge more for food and beverage so that uh, we can maybe reduce the deficit? Uh, unfortunately, if we charge more for food and beverage, which we already have comments from residents that we already charge too much, if we charge more for golf, there's a good chance that those rounds of golf are going to go down dramatically. So, uh, so that's why it's a balance. Uh, there we uh, we try and we've raised the golf free fees every year since I've been here uh, To try and make sure that we're staying with market while not killing the golf program. So that's really the approach uh, the other thing uh, unfortunately It's the nature of the beast of uh, a bundled community This is considered a bundled community because when you buy into this community as a property owner you're also buying into all these amenities that you have here. And really what you're saying is that I'm also willing to support all these amenities because they add value to my property. And that's what it's all about. The only reason you have an association is to maintain the value of your property and hopefully even enhance the value of their property through the, um, through the rules and regulations you have with respect to the appearance of homes, architectural standards, through all the amenities and what have you. So when you buy into a community like this, whether you're a golfer or not, you're really saying, I'm supporting all these amenities because I recognize, I recognize it adds value to my property. And uh, so obviously all of our amenities, we try and keep the user fees at a reasonable level to where we can keep the deficits to a minimum, but it's driven by the market. Tom? Morning, Bob. Um, Tom Cavino uh, from 185 Devon Road. Uh, one of the things uh, that I look at is how we can find uh, the opportunities to bring more money here. Uh, namely, when we have a beautiful uh, conference center area, how often do we use it for conferences? And I'm talking outside, mm -hmm. so that uh, you have rental uh, money's coming in. Secondly, uh, with regard to the pickleball, uh, is that at any time being planned to be moved to the racket uh, area, the racket club area? If so, what are the opportunities or chances of it, what uh, we have now, becoming a kitchen and making this an area where you might entertain for weddings, uh, special large parties, uh, whether they be political or not, et cetera. Uh, I, I think each uh, opportunity is going to show us uh, more uh, income coming to us. And I happen to be one of those who believes that what you see is what you get, and I'll stick with uh, those good or beautiful signs that you're planning. Um, I think that uh, people need to have some uh, pride in the uh, resort that we uh, live in. And it, it's a lot nicer to have um, maybe a little electricity rather than just the tack-on signs. Thank you. Okay. With respect to the Community Conference Center, uh, there's no doubt it is underutilized. And that's something that uh, Mary Jo and her marketing team are really going to be focusing on next year to try and really get the word out about what a great place this is to have a, a small conference. <clears throat> Unfortunately, one of our limitations is our lodging. While we have a lot of timeshare units on property, and most people that want to do a conference, an overnight conference, they want to have lodging close by. Okay. 
so even though we have 485 timeshare units, uh, they're occupied during the season, which is when most people want to have a conference uh, for the most part. So, so it's hard to do any larger conferences where they need a lot of lodging. Wintertime, no problem. And that's something we're going to focus on is see if we can't bring some business here in the wintertime that they're really not looking at using a lot of outdoor amenities. They just want to have a conference here. Uh, day conferences are really the ideal for us. But then if we can get some overnight conferences, even better, the real key is lodging there. But that's something that Mary Jo and her team are really going to focus on for 2014. Uh, with respect to the, the kitchen here, you know, long term, quite honestly, uh, I don't know that this is the best place to have all of your large food and beverage functions. It's very inefficient. Uh, anytime you have more than one kitchen, you create inefficiencies. Right now, we have to, and even if we had a, a bigger kitchen, Friday night, Saturday night, for example, you have a party here. We also have to have a staff over there. Okay, so you're duplicating staff. Uh, and you're not going to make as much money. The ideal situation is you have one large kitchen that can do a la carte dining or regular dining and then at the same time can do banquets. And when you do that, your incremental costs are much less than your incremental revenue. And so that's really long term. I don't think there should be a kitchen here as you described. I think the bigger kitchen should be over at Legends and have a venue there. But that's that's my personal uh, the, opinion the, on that. Now, the, let me go to pickleball real quick right. uh, before I forget. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we do have in 16 and 17 to expand the racket facility to add indoor courts for pickleball as well as have dual purpose outdoor courts, tennis and pickleball. So that is in the five year plan. The only comment that I was gonna make was, uh, I noticed that for example, when the ladies club has uh, their me uh, meetings down here that literally everything has to be trucked in Correct. from legends. Correct. And I would think that that's not really economical no, as well not. as helpful. No, it's not. That's not. That's a, that's not a good situation. You know, that makes it hard to uh, have consistency with a food product. And again, it creates a lot more cost. So that's why you'd really prefer to have one large kitchen that handles all your a la carte dining as well as your banquet dining all in one facility. That's the ideal situation. Yes, sir. Uh, Pat Donahue, 252 Amherst Lane. Uh, Bob, do we have any sense or projected figures of uh, when the Peavine Road expansion takes place of uh, what revenue uh, Fairfield will receive from the procurement of uh, properties along the uh, projected route? Uh, no, they've contacted us and at least told us, here's the properties that uh, you're involved with, and it's actually only on phase two. Phase one, it was all Wyndham property. Uh, so, but we haven't received, they're going through the appraisal process, I think right now. We have not received any numbers as to, you know, here's what we're offering for that property. Probably the, uh, the primary area is Robin Hood Park, because the way they're realigning uh, Sneed, uh, they'll actually need to take up some of Robin Hood Park. Not the area that we use the most, the pavilions, but kind of that parking area. So that, that's really the, um, the area that we would garner the most money from. Nothing Thank yet. You. Gary. Bob, I'm looking at your 770000 right. new borrowing. Yes. Is that to be done only to maintain a cash balance? between two and two and a half million? Uh, yes, yes, so now again. Do your, do your monthly figures reflect that you need two, two and a half million dollar each month in the cash? Well, a couple things, uh, you may not be able to see it, but this cash right here, that's restricted cash. That's your capital fund. That can only be used for capital uh, projects, okay? This 959 is the sewer fund. That can only be used for sewer projects. So really, it's the $1 million that we're talking about, which is our operating fund cash. So we'd like to keep it around $1 million based on our uh, history of operating expenses and what have you. Now, we do have a line of credit. It's a $4 million line of credit that we can draw on in emergencies, but we'd prefer not to draw on that because we're paying interest. 
So it's really based and on. And you past won't history. be paying interest on the seven hundred and seventy. No, we would. We would. Yeah. So I'm just saying, in an emergency, you know, if for some reason we needed not forget about the seven seventy uh, new financing. If just we found that one month we were short, then we would draw on the line of credit. But we haven't had to do that yet. We took that out uh, over a year ago, or about a year ago. Thank you. You're welcome. Pat? Yeah. Pat Gruway, 113 Bromwell Way, 12-year resident. Uh, first of all, let me thank the few of you that did have the courtesy to show up for a budget meeting. Thank you very much, because uh, your board and your board of directors and your management team does a lot of work to get this ready, and you've done a good job. I concur. Thank you. Uh, but the attendance is brutal. Anyway, uh, there's been a lot of discussion here about uh, signage, uh, improvement of the Glade to market and get new people to move in here. <clears throat> and I've brought this up before to the board, mostly privately with individuals, but we are in competition with an awful lot of communities such as ourselves to get new residents to move here. And the lifeblood of any community obviously is new blood spending money. We have an eyesore that we can't do anything about, and that's Peavine Road, but it will change sooner or later. But from Food City North, or Phase 2 as they call it, most of us here will be dead and gone before that's completed. Uh, can we, as a club and the business owners, from Food City North, especially on the left-hand side, <clears throat> partner in cleaning up the drainage, <clears throat> doing something to beautify the area, so that when a new prospect drives into the glade, they don't get to see what I call an eyesore along the left-hand side of the road, and specifically from Cumberland County Bank North, that ditch with the beautiful weeds growing out of it in the summertime, and those drainage canyons that drain in that are wide open. Could we not, with our own company, or our own ability to cover up some of these, put drainage in, I know that the extension's coming through, but that's still years away. Mm. And I firmly believe that first impressions are very lasting for people. Mm -hmm. I leave it at that. I'm just asking this board to consider, you do spend money. I, I've noticed an enormous amount of expenditure. I don't know how much it would cost to cover that up and to put a pipe system in. And I'm sure we could probably work with Scott Blaylock. Maybe he could help us. But that is an eyesore. Thank you. Well, something we, we really would not want to do now, uh, something to consider as part of the widening project. Uh, but I think, again, the widening project, right now they're saying it's going to start sometime summer of 2014. And, phase uh, one. That's phase one. And phase two, their goal is to go right from phase one into phase two. Do you believe so, that, Bob? I do. I do. Yeah, because it, it doesn't make sense not to do it. Does anybody in this I'm room believe that? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a hey, half, Bob, uh, you're I'm a half class fool. Got, fool I'm got. from Missouri. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't buy that. My argument is I understand that phase two will be done at some point. But in the meantime, we've hired a marketing director. We're spending money here and there. We're doing all these things to make an improvement here and make this place attractive, potential new residents and that eyesore exists for the next couple of years. All I'm saying is, if you can spend 400,000 on amenities here and there, can we spend 40 or $50,000 if that's what it's gonna cost? I don't think it will if we use our own employees to do it. They don't oh, have yeah, to do it all in one shot. I don't think piping's the answer, is just really having our staff focus more on that, and that's something that uh, they've already started to do. We're building it into the budget for next year to, uh, uh, to take care of some of the trash pickup and things of that nature. Uh, but I don't think you want to go out and start spending a lot of capital dollars for something like that that could be torn up in two, three years. Even if it's five years, I think uh, the membership would not be happy if five years from now we came back and said, whoops, you know, we shouldn't have spent that money. So I think it's more a matter of labor and taking care of it. Yes, ma'am. You're up. I was waiting on him. Okay. Um, I'm May Davis. This gray-haired gentleman two rows up here is my husband, Brooks Wimberly. 
We uh, just moved into Kingsbury Circle, been here two weeks. So I'm going to tell you my uh, impression when I drove in. Um, you're competing with Teleco Lakes, mm -hmm. um, which is a beautiful area. And I had decided we would buy a home in Teleco Lakes. Uh, Brooks had to. And, but, and he said when we were coming here, we, this had been on our schedule this summer.